This is the all-new Audi A4. This is the all-new Audi A5. This is not an editing error. This is the truth. Because this vehicle here is the all-new Audi A4 and the Audi A5 in one. And it is called now new generation of the Audi A5. And I'll tell you all about this Thomas Nautico Fuel in 4K full screen, full length. Let's go. First, staying here with our Ascari Blue sedan, the S5. Yes, it's an S5. And you can see here the S models, they have this honeycomb structure here in the lower part. Also these inlays here in the front grille. Usually an S5 would have bright inserts right here and also in the lower part. This one here optionally equipped with a black package. LED, new lamps, it's a nice integration here, horizontal style, and they are in three different trims, LED, LED Plus, and the Matrix LED. The latter one you see here, they also have special indicator animation and so on. You can see in a very sporty style, the hood has, you know, it's kind of like inserted into the whole front area, what we usually see from sporty cars, and the same applies also for the side mirrors. They are placed at the side doors, and not here in this triangle. This also should remind you of sports cars. Next to the wheels, 17 to 20 inch. These here are 20 inch wheels. The biggest ones available are S wheels and also the red contrasting brake caliper here for the S model next to the black contrast here in the lower part. Usually the side mirrors would also be in the bright styling, which I personally prefer for an S model. But here, once again, with the black pack, you can also get this more sinister look here. Four meters 83 or 190 inches is the length. This is seven centimeters or three inches longer than yeah, the predecessor A4, because for Audi, this is the successor of the A4. But at the same time, it's also the successor of the A5. Um, yeah, it, you see, it's getting a little bit complicated, but they want to rearrange their portfolio there a little bit. And also the other logic behind this is that uneven numbers are the combustion engines now, and the even numbers are the electric models. That's why an A4 and an A6 is an EV at Audi now, and an A5 and an A7 would be the combustion engine, brother. And the funny thing is that when you look here, like at the height here, it's a little bit more A4 sedan. But then if you look here to this stretched roof line and so on, and like this shoulder or hip area, is a little bit more A5. S model here gets this additional spoiler on the top. It's also black, but this is one part that is always black and not part of the addition. Then S5 exhaust tips. And when you have the black package, it's also a little bit darker here around and real exhaust here, pretty cool. The standard would then be a little bit brighter here. So from the styling here, that's why I also picked this vehicle here as our first main exterior vehicle for the day. This would be mine, not with the black package. So this without the black package, nice blue, and also here as the sport pick because I feel it combines this, hey, I have the beautiful exterior, at the same time, a great access to the rear. And when I've seen this now, to me, it's more an A5 successor. To Audi, it's more an A4 successor. But yeah, the truth is it's both. It's a successor for both, definitely. Then you have standard suspension. Then you have a fixed sport suspension, 20 millimeters lower. Or you have a sport adaptive suspension. It's also 20 millimeters lower, but then with adaptive dampers, which you can also rule then with a sport comfort setting and so on. And here, this then our estate for today. We have even more colors coming up uh, back there. It's very, very interesting. So this is here horizon blue, a little bit yeah, frosty gray, lighter blue, something like that. And you can see here the tail lamp signature is basically the same, but you can all, of course pick your individual one. And then we have the typical estate or um, avant form. However, it's not that steep here. So it has some kind of, yeah, maybe a little bit shooting brake design, I would say. So the Top of the line here, the 3 liter V6, the known one for the S5, 367 horsepower, all wheel drive with a rear wheel bias. And this now gets an MHF system, and this is really supposed to save significant um, fuel. So that's at least what they promise. Of course, when we drive this vehicle, we will find out for you. Then you have the 2 liter TDI with 204 horsepower. This also receives the MHF system. 
And then we have some petrol engines without mild hybrid system. And that would be the two liter TFSI with 150 or with 204 horsepower. And the entry level version is also available with front wheel drive. What also will be coming up later is a plug-in hybrid then based on the two liter TFSI. That one then in two different horsepower stages, also now with a way larger battery for the pure electric range. And here, this was here our Avant in the full spec. You, I will just leave the stage for just a second here in the horizon blue. It, I think it also works as the estate, you know, very well. So exterior design, I think they really nailed it with this one. And then we have one more Avant, and this is here the, it's an S5 Avant. Seriously? I mean, this is even, like an even bigger problem for my brain. You read, oh, this is approaching that once again. You read S5 in close, then the camera goes back and it's an estate. And your brain like, it's not possible. Yeah, it is possible. Obviously you see it now, um, but I definitely have to get used to that. <laughs> Do you as well, tell me in the comments. Here, once again, the biggest 20 inch wheels. And here, my favorite styling also for the S5, no matter if sedan or estate, here, the chrome frame around and also the bright accentuation lower part here, then the silver mirrors as well. I would keep it like it is right here. And also in the front, this would be my S styling, definitely. Also with the bright inserts right here, bright styling left and right. And I think it's really important not to go for the black package to have the white Audi rings. This is, by the way, here Daytona gray. And then there's was it magnet gray, I think? Yeah, it was magnet gray, yeah. Once again, here the black package. This one here is a sedan or fastback or sportback. I would call it sportback, but Audi doesn't. And then here, there's also a special launch color where you have, you know, another color inset in the very front. I think design-wise, they all work very well, just that I would not personally pick the black package or what about you. Before we let the rule of truth decide here about the trunk, Look at that here in the lower part. The Autogefühl fake exhaust police has been working for you for over 10 years. And this is the result. No fake exhaust anymore with the Audi A4 or the Audi A5. Yeah, because it's called Audi A5 now. Yeah, and it's both. A4. Okay, we had, that, we had that earlier. So no fake exhaust anymore, real exhaust. The TFSI gets them like on both sides, one each. The TDI, the diesel will have like on, just on one side actually, but no fake exhaust on the other one. And now the trunk here of the A5 sedan. It's a sport bag, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so let me there we go. Um, the width is a meter or 40 inches. And then the length here is one meters and nine or 43 inches underneath. There's in here the Vector Studio cabling that will look different. So there we go. And then this is like a parcel shelf you can also remove. To fold the seats, you have to go around. But the great thing is, I mean, it looks great on the outside, central styling, but such a great access to the rear. So I think that's a really a great decision to go for that one. And then you can fold the seats here, two third, one third split. And then we go here with the full length in 4K. Go and this then to the driver's seat about 185 or 73 inches. So 445 liters for the sport back sedan. Sorry about that. And 480 liters for the estate. Not too much of a difference. You can see the difference is here. You have more height here in the lower back area. The length itself is yeah more or less the same. The same also goes for the width and so on. It's really different than right here. And the second big difference is you can unlock the seats from here. That's of course a very practical feature that you can directly load things through. Key fob here in matte black, which feels quite good. Then the door handles here are basically uh, hidden on the inside here. There's no physical feedback or something. Door closing sound. That sounds really good, right? I'm here. And the rear doors. That sounds even better, so uh, yeah, I really like it. So great door closing sounds. What about the interior quality right here? This is here somewhat hard, but it, it doesn't look hard, but it is actually uh, quite hard, let's say, a little bit maybe. Then we have nice fabric covering here, so this is quite a cool thing. And there's also this three-dimensional imprint. Do you remember where we've seen exactly this? Hmm. 
Yeah, if you are a very diligent subscriber, you know what we have seen this year with the new Bentley Continental GT. Hmm, interesting, right? Then this is also an S-Line interior. So we have the badge right here at the steering wheel, flat bottom, perforated sides. Then also the fabric insert here in this very case. You have this one large black panel when the infotainment system and the instruments are off. Soon they are going to be alive. <laughs> and these are lovely seats here. These are the sport seats actually, but in fabric, gray fabric on the inside, a little bit darker on the outside. And they will also deliver you the best comfort because they have the softest and most plush bolstering. They can also electronically adjust them right here. This then also in the front, the electric lumbar support, front and back and so on. And yeah, this is a very comfortable feeling because the other thing that Audi wants to do is making this segment here basically like one segment more above. That's why I also hear the electric control of the steering wheel. Um, yeah, I mean, it has grown in length. It's meanwhile pretty long, what used to be maybe an A6 in the past or something like that. Um, so yeah, it, it feels very elaborated and it also gets, you know, like this new screen format we have already, for example, seen with the Audi Q6 e-tron recently. Um, so yeah, it definitely makes in this respect a little bit more upmarket impression on the first hand and headroom here in the front with the fixed roof yeah plenty left and the cockpit overview here this is completely new 12 inch instruments 14.5 infotainment and an 11 inch passenger screen is an option where you can also watch youtube for example and you cannot see that as a driver while driving then at the moment, I can see it stationary, but not while driving. Also pretty cool how the ambient lighting is integrated. First of all, in the front of the windshield, all the way around. And it also gives you, for example, here when I hit the turning indicator or also the hazard lights on both sides, then you have this animation then also with the indicators. So yeah, a very nice light feature, definitely. By the way, as for the seats, um, as I said, these ones will give you both best comfort because like the other animal skin alternatives, Audi is not into that yet. Um, so they're really lagging behind that one. There's also a Dynamica microfiber seat available, for example, then and in general a base seat, a sport seat and an S sport seat. That's like the logic. Here we have also fabric at the dashboard, by the way. And then in the lower part, more ambient lighting integration like that with adaptive cup holders. Then real volume jog seal, at least that, two USB-C chargers and also inductive charging pad with cooling holes. This is here for the shifting, D, reverse, so pretty easy, nice solution. Then the drive select for the driving modes, you can also click it here and then it appears up there in the infotainment screen. So there's one solution not to do everything in the screen, at least with that and the volume. Here, a nice armrest, you can fold it up, some space underneath, and you can also adjust the height right here with this button, so also a nice solution. Driver POV, you can change what you see in the digital instruments, also for example on the left or on the right side. And then there we also have a head-up display, and you can check out some more studio lights right there. You also have more information in there. By the way, here, optional B&O sound system, 20 speakers, and they are all over the vehicle, literally. Look here to the right is the biggest screen that Audi has so far, and it has this Android automotive base, so it works definitely quicker than before. So yeah, definitely more responsive. Climate unit, however, is integrated right here, and they have this bar here that you can rest your hand while clicking something, but sometimes I also find it distracting in a way because um, yeah, maybe you have to do like this and then you have to see like how do you coordinate that with your fingers. Yeah, this would probably be the best solution. You rest your three fingers here and then click like right here, but it can also be blocking then at the same time. So I'm not sure if this was the best idea overall or what do you think? Rear seats, first of all the rear doors, yeah, they look quite fancy, but it's rather hard than here in, in the rear. And here with the fabric covering, no fabric on the inside of the doors, neither in the front nor in the rear. And then the leg room as I'm driving, well, you can use this recess here. And you know that the length increase has all gone into the wheelbase. So we have more leg room than before in the A4, but it's not like plenty of leg room. You can see here, you can sit here as a tall adult, but it's not plenty of space, um, honestly, for the length and headroom. Yeah, also works here. This the sport bag or the sedan with the uh, low roof line without the panoramic roof. 
Um, so it will be better in year one and also with the panoramic roof. I'm soon going to compare that. Yeah, the comfort in general is actually quite okay, but it's not that it's a special vehicle for rear transport. Also here and here in the middle part, there's a large middle tunnel. Works more or less, a little bit harder of course, not ideal. Then you have here in the middle console two USB-C chargers next to a separate climate unit, even with seat heating. Isofix here in the lower part, you can slide it actually open or close it again. And then this one down, adaptive cupolos is actually also good build quality. And then you can also use this ski hatch right here. Here, headroom comparison with the estate, with the Avant, and also with panoramic roof. Panoramic roof available for both in the sport bag, in the sport bag or sedan. Let's just leave it that way. It's a little bit shorter. And here, there's definitely more headroom. So there's a little bit more headroom in the Avant in the rear, plus a little bit more headroom with the glass roof. And then you have like the max headroom. That would be like the logic. And if you come closer, this is also in here the panoramic roof with the electrochrome function. And if you look at that, you can have the zebra look. Although I don't see any logical reason why you would possibly use one or other because Either you want to have the sun blocked out or not, right? So this way it's clean. And then you can also have it slide through with this effect right here or go back again. However, as a car user, I would wish just basically two functionalities, open and close. Pricing 45,000 euros is a German entry price. I already have for you. The Avant is 1,650 euros more expensive than the Sportback or sedan, I will just keep calling it A5 Sportback, period. Even though Audi calls it A5 sedan. Sorry, Audi, about it. <laughs> yeah, and this one will also be offered on the Northern American market, the Avant not. The estate then will be more important for the German market. And would like to know from you, what do you think about this whole renaming thing, merging two segments? Mercedes did that with the Mercedes CLE, merging the Coupe segments of E and C class. Here now they did this with the whole midsize segment, claimed to be upper midsize segment now, to be like a segment higher above. Uh, and partly I think it also works. I think it looks stunning. The exterior design Audi I think works very, very well. The others have received a lot of criticism. I think this one will be received way better, both as the Sportback and also as the Estate. So share your opinion, please, in the comments and also tune into the competitors. We also had some cool comparison episodes.